Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Welcome to this episode of Partner First. Uh, what is it today? February 2nd, 2 How crazy is that? Um, the year is flying by, and uh, today we're here to talk about something that's pretty damn awesome. It's security that doesn't suck. Uh, if you've done any kind of security awareness training, if you've done any kind of phishing simulation, uh, you've done any kind of, you know, awareness stuff for your for your MSP clients or internally, which you should all be doing. Um, if you've done any of that, you realize it sucks, right? You got to do the manual scheduling. You got to do the, you know, talking to them about, you know, hey, you clicked on this. You shouldn't have clicked on this. Um, or sometimes you get somebody that's, you know, just you get a, a partner that's enabling your staff to try to, you know, get you to click on shit you really shouldn't be clicking on. I don't want to call anybody out, but you know, sometimes they're out to get you. But uh, if you've done any of that, you realize how much it sucks sometimes. And we're, we have an answer for it. Uh, you know, here on Partner First, we focus on thought leadership, subject matter experts, and new initiatives all MSPs should be uh, aware of to better themselves. And today is no different. Like all of our other uh, events, all of our other live streams, this is recorded. It will be available immediately after on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Uh, and please engage us in the chat. This is, we're here to have fun. We're here to engage. Uh, this, is not by, this is not death by PowerPoint, as Simon likes to say. So uh, without much further ado, Let's uh, invite up our guests. We have uh, Connor and Josh of Finn Security. How you doing, gentlemen? Doing great. Hey, hey. So, uh, Connor. So, uh, Josh, we'll start with you, man. Uh, and when I met these gentlemen, they were both CEOs of the company. Uh, that's not the case. <laughs> I forgot about that. Were, <laughs> we met at IT Nation uh, Connect last year. Uh, had a great time hanging out and getting to know each other. Um, and that's when I first met these guys. But uh, I will give you the chance to have a uh, a proper introduction. Josh, who are you? What do you do sure. with, uh, with Finn? Why are you here, man? Well, you'll be glad to know that I've gotten a promotion since then. I'm the CTO now, which is objectively better, uh, I would say. Uh, I keep the wheels on the bus. I manage the dev team. You know, I, I came on to manage the product at the beginning, which was just Connor. <laughs> and now we've grown a little bit to where we have a real dev That's team. No offense, job. Connor. Yeah, so it's definitely a full-time job. I still try to – I do as much coding as I can, but it's like up and down. I do a lot of support, so a lot of the partners that use us know me as the guy fixing stuff. Connor's like, hey, I got a problem. You got to talk to Josh. That's me. Nice. And and you're the guy that all the feature requests eventually end up and uh, you put send you crying uh, back to your room. When <laughs> I'm the guy that stresses about the feature requests for sure. I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm the guy that and, says, uh, no, that's going to be easy. Yeah, <laughs> super easy. Super easy. I always hated that guy. And and mind you, as a CEO, I've I've been that guy so many times. Yeah. It's not a big deal. We can get that taken care of. Hey guys, actually do the work, get this done. They're like, oh. So the Connor, the guy that says this is going to be easy. What's you? Who are you? What's your role uh, over at Finn? Uh, so I'm uh by title the CEO, but really I uh talk with all the clients, uh, do everything when it comes to sales or. Community engagement mostly is me as well. Uh, and I actually promise features to clients that then Josh and I have to, uh, well, now the dev team, like Josh said, we have a real dev team, have to end up building. Uh, and a fun fact, though, is people like to say, I think uh, Slagle's mentioned this before, I actually built the first version of the platform. So I'm not just some kind of like out of touch uh, dude who promises things. It's like I built, I built the first versions of it. So uh, I know a tiny bit about what goes into it. And, and, and Josh, how many times has it been revised since to actually make it a uh, <laughs> to make it a usable hey, platform? A hundred? I don't know. The foundations were there. Listen, yeah. as as I like to say, I'm a I'm a YouTube coder, right? Like I, I understand various languages. I've done thousands of projects over my lifetime. I'm a network engineer. I'm not a developer. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I've I've done some you know some forum development for my, in PHP for my you know Final oh, Fantasy XI groups. I, I get it. I. I'm there with you, Connor. I've been I think there. We now. all have heartburn now after saying, hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things that that attracted me, you guys, and I got to give a shout out. I haven't seen Dustin start, you know, with his shins in the in the chat yet. Um, and I think that's the best example. Tim says Connor makes promises. Um, I keep most of them. But Josh, yeah, keeps most of them. them. Josh keeps them. <laughs> Um, but you know, one of the things Dustin, when he uh, introduced me to you guys was, um, you guys were coming at this on a known industry, right? This is security awareness training, phishing simulation. These are not brand new concepts. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you guys were coming at it, understanding what it is, understanding the gaps, understanding what the needs were from MSPs, and actually listening. Um, and that feature development pace and that that actually listening part was why I was so interested. And that's why we sat down and uh, we did a little quick recording back then too. Um, so so tell me about that. I, I'm not asking you to talk trash about anybody else. We don't do that here. But I wouldn't do that. what are the things you found were missing that said, okay, we can do this and maybe we yeah. can do it better? Uh, there were really two main areas. Uh, so the origins of Finner, actually, I was building with a group of other people, a whole bunch of other cybersecurity tools that at the end of the day, nobody wanted to buy. Uh, and everyone would complain about phishing and security awareness and their employees not knowing what to do or not feeling supported. And so uh, I listened enough and I was like, OK, well, maybe we're building all the wrong things. We should focus on this. And we focused in on like two areas uh, that we saw huge gaps in the industry. Uh, and that was one, users felt they were really punished by their cybersecurity program. None of them that I ever talked to, and I've talked with hundreds of employees, uh, ever felt supported, which shocked me. And the second was we fell backwards into helping MSPs. Two years ago, I didn't even know what the word MSP meant. Uh, and then we ran across a few of them, and they really liked our ideas about how we're actually going to support humans and learning cybersecurity and doing education. And they said, oh, can you add these other features? Can you build a platform that lets us do X, Y, and Z uh, in these ways, make it super automated? You know, I could throw out 90 million buzzwords here. But essentially what, what was really clear is there was this gap between the products that exist and what works for MSPs in this specific industry. So we were, Josh and I didn't really know any better at the time. So we're like, all right, we'll just build it. Uh, and we did. So you went in, you met MSPs not knowing what they were. You talked to them and yeah. you said, I can do business with these people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. That, they hid their craziness really well, right? <laughs> right. I, I mean, I, I know you kept up. You guys kept up with the uh, hanging out and talking and, and maybe imbibing in a few drinks uh, here and there uh, at IT Nation. So I, I know you've kept, I know you can keep pace with us. Um, I, I'm just impressed. Usually people talk to MSPs and then go running the opposite direction. So, yeah. um, but hearing about choice, an MSP, yeah. yeah, right. It's, you know, but like uh, having a, Deciding to go toward the MSPs as opposed to going toward enterprise first, um, I think makes a big difference. Uh, you know, there's a lot of companies that start off as enterprise first and or direct to consumer or whatever it is um, first, and then they start building backwards towards the mm -hmm. MSP. Um, that's far different than something yeah. built for MSPs because um, there are specific needs. And I get everybody's a snowflake and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, MSPs do have multi tenanted needs, they have multi tiered needs, um, centralized, you know, centralized data collection and you know being more technical than most they you know they need certain things um which are all the things that connor promises and josh tries to deliver so nice. and I, I see the very first feature request here tim golden uh where's the swag i do i have uh, your t-shirt size and we gosh, have t-shirts now as, as you can see here's one of them a matrix themed that is the the matrix you can't say matrix i mean you're gonna get uh, you know the Wachowski sisters coming after you uh, yeah i can't say that <laughs> You got, you got uh, Fintrix. Yeah, Fintrix, fin, I think. Fin parody universe, simulation universe. I mean. Yeah, yeah. It, it may sound like something that might give you, you know, nauseous diarrhea. <laughs> something like that. The lawyer's not watching, guys. Right? Probably there somewhere. you go. I, I don't know if I can trust this. I was also promised swag uh, back in November. <sighs> so, you know. And, and, and Josh guys. said, I'll get you a sleeve, which is a sock. But I'll get you a sleeve, and I'm still waiting. So, Sleeveless. Just saying. I packaged, I, I went so far as to package up all of that right here. And I just never went to the UPS store. And I know like, like uh, Tim, Tim Sainer, don't hold your breath. Cause then you'll end like, by the time you get swag, you'll be way dead. So. Uh, oh, bro. <laughs> I, uh, so we're going to, we're all going to be together at Rider Boom uh, next it, week. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I could almost invite you. Now this would not make sense for me flying. Uh, Cause you guys are coming from, from the Northeast, but um if you come down to uh, Tampa with the swag, I will have Simon ship it out from back home. Uh, right, Simon? Very good. All right, there we go. Uh, and those of you that don't know about Write a Boom, uh, it is um, – uh, this is not technical deficit, but just go with me here. Um, <laughs> this is Write a Boom. Uh, this is an event that will be happening next week, uh, and Fin Security uh, will be there in force uh, and I'll be there doing my usual. I'm there for the laws, of course, uh, hanging out with everybody. So good time to get to know everybody in person if you're going to be there. So with that said, um, challenges, right? Uh, the 
oh, you know, you clicked on something, you're bad, go to HR. Um, why is that a bad thing? They screwed up. They clicked on a phishing link. Why is that a bad thing that we should, why shouldn't we spank them? Why should I mean, besides <laughs> the HR reasons. <laughs> um, the, so what happens, uh, I'll go through what happens right now. Typically when users hmm. get fished is they get a video uh, and they've already seen that video or like you're, you said, they get a link to a page. It's like, uh Oh, you've been fished. And then that's pretty much where, uh, where the training stops because people either mute that video and walk away. Uh, or it's a page that has a, you know, maybe generic help um, about generic social engineering. Uh, and what was really important to us is where people actually learn is when they get specific education against the vulnerabilities they uniquely have. So the way we like this goes so far back as to the way we do phishing needs to be very, very intelligent. We need to be pinpointing vulnerabilities in users because then the training we need to give them is based upon that exact vulnerability we just discovered. It can't be a, here's a video that explains phishing that you've already seen, or here's a web page, or here's a blog post, or here's a YouTube video. It has to be, uh, this is specifically what you did. You know, you downloaded this attachment and you shouldn't have done that for these reasons. You clicked this link and you should have hovered first. Like those are two very common examples, but they're what we're seeing so far, uh, in the, even into 2022 already is, um, Generic phishing, like the Prince scams and all that stuff, that that's not really as effective as what's actually happening now, which is like coordinated spear phishing where people go on LinkedIn and digest your org chart and target groups of people based on their supervisor. So if that's what they're up against. That's what we should be assessing them on and then give them the specific training to recognize that that very targeted attack is happening. And I think that's the point, right? Like talking about partner enablement or client enablement. It's, it's, we talk about career development. We talk about training. We talk about, you know, we don't think twice about sending somebody out to do a vendor training or go to a conference or, you know, that kind of thing. We never think twice about it. But when you say, okay, well, that, you know, if you look at that and say, okay, we want to do these things because we want to improve upon their skills in this area, well, the phishing simulation and security awareness is not really that different. An event happened. There's an, I like to call them opportunities for improvement and we're acting on that. Um, you know, all the MSPs I hear talk about, Oh, everybody hates this and phishing simulation sucks. And, you know, right. and nobody wants to do this training. I get that. But if you can position it as a, this is a way to make you better protect you and maybe lower your insurance yeah. premiums, maybe, you know, put you guys less at risk. Maybe, you know, it's one less thing you have to worry about, yeah. you know, Mike or Susie clicking on that, you know, dank of America link and, you know, putting in their, <laughs> their social, right. Cause who would give out their social to some random internet person? If you didn't get that reference, you know, go watch tech bar uh, when these we gentlemen are on. Oh, is, that, is that forever inscribed somewhere? Yes, yes. Oh no. <laughs> what happens on the internet gets talked about forever absolutely um <laughs> you know okay and so this is a good point okay and simon can simon can attest to this right simon yeah cool all right um so this is a good point without fail we have every single person that has ever worked at oit in the last three years as soon as they they start working with us they get an email or that usually it's an email saying hey this is ray i need you to run to uh the store best buy real quick and get me some gift cards sent for my iPhone, every single employee. Now this is mm. not us fishing. This is somebody <laughs> actually, you know, doing this. Um, and we get it and I don't use an iPhone I, I, at all because, you know, uh, but like every single time we, this happens and yeah, and it happens their first week or two. It's at this point, it's just, we, we make it part of the onboarding. This is going to happen. Mm. Um, but like, but that kind of thing, yeah. And it's it's one of those things like if you can prepare them for this stuff, if you can train them on this stuff, and this is stuff that helps them at home too, because it's not like the phishing is only happening at their work emails. Right, I right. guarantee you they're getting a BT and T log into your internet account email also. I guarantee you they're getting this wire transfer happened that, you know, whatever. So if you can help them in their business and their personal lives with just a little bit of training, yeah. why not? What's up, Clay? How you doing, man? It seems um, like uh, every IT guy or girl has the story of, uh, yeah, my parents called me while they were online with Microsoft support and had downloaded <laughs> like, remote desktop control. And it's like, yeah, my no. family too. Yeah. Like yeah last everyone. year. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I have a gentleman by the name of Tim and maybe Tim's a bad example since he's, you know, he's here asking for swag, but you know, I, I have uh, an Indian gentleman by the name of Mike asking me to look through my event log and I gave him access to my computers and he's showing me all these alerts and oh damn, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
it happens. You know, and I, I, I mean, I've had that. I had a, we had a, um, what was it? A hotel client in Miami beach. Um, there's enough hotels. I don't have to say which one back in my MSP days. Um, but they called me at like three in the morning saying, Hey, we have somebody from your tech team trying to log in and we can not install team viewer and they need access to it to fix something. And I'm like, you're telling me somebody from my team can't, ins- first of all, we wouldn't install team viewer, but they can't install the remote access tool. Like they're from my team. Does that make sense? And they f- fully believed and they never said it or seen IT. They said, I'm here from your tech support team and the front desk absolutely was, sh- thank goodness we had all the appropriate lockdowns in place where they couldn't yeah. if they wanted to, but it's those calls were happening and at three in the morning, it's the right thing to do to a 24 seven business. You're going to get the least trained employee properly, proper, uh, right. probably answering that call. It makes absolute sense. Um, and and we have, I don't know if we should take this from the the, the Dutch uh, beersman. Um, he says he likes your beer, Josh. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's uh, our, our notorious uh, VIP, um, very important PowerShell, uh, <laughs> Kevin Tech. <laughs> Kalar, <laughs> who's a, a beer sommelier, uh, also. So, yeah, and I agree. I like your beer too. Um, and siphoning off. So, okay, you don't Connor says Connor's beer, trying right? to grow my beard. Yeah, yeah I, I like Connor. You're going for the stubble. Is that that we're? Yeah, going yeah, for? yeah. This is a couple of weeks of growth. You know, it's a couple of weeks. So this if, is a couple of weeks. No, just... So, Kelvin did these tech and five minute videos. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because the guy's brilliant, which. Ah, don't hold that against me. He's he's really don't say it again though, Kelvin. Um, but be. Kelvin did these tech and five minute videos, and he went pre COVID to like clean shaven, like Simon mm-hmm. clean shaven, and then like like a month later he had this Viking beard thing going on, <laughs> and I'm like, how the hell that happened? Like that was impressive. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it, sort if of you watch his, yeah, I, yeah, I imagine it has something to do with clogs and beer. I don't know IPAs or something. <laughs> um, all right. So, but to get back on track here, so phishing simulation, security awareness. Um, all right. So personal development, improvement, improving their business life, their personal lives, but training, training sucks. Right. And uh, Simon says, this is training that doesn't suck. He said, these are your words. I'd like to hear. Simon's how does the training cool. not suck? Tell me how, you know, so a few things, uh, a lot of training contents made by uh, cybersecurity folk. Um, and us as cybersecurity, I, I guess I'm not cybersecurity. I studied math in college, so I, I kind of get the vibe. Um, mm-hmm. When we try and to be to clear, call, you don't make the security training yourself, right? You, you're always yeah, very clear about that's that. That's what I'm saying is we didn't make the content. We found what we thought was the best content. So we partner with Ninjio and Habituate and a bunch of other providers that provide, a, I'll say another buzzword, like micro learning opportunities. <laughs> Nobody wants to get like beaten over the head with an hour of here you go. Congrats. You have an hour of training that you need to go watch uh, cybersecurity videos for. So we deliver it five minutes at a time, four minutes at a time, even get it as little as possible, but as often as possible to increase retention is our goal. But that, that's important too, right? Like getting secu- getting the training content from multiple sources gives you the ability to get the best in class stuff. You're not beholden to just reselling one specific pack of stuff where it may be quality content for one area, but bad content for another area. HIPAA is a good example, right? You had been talking to certain providers about HIPAA, talking to certain providers about other uh, other areas of interest. Um, I don't want to throw any names out there, but, you know, but the act, but being able to do that makes it better for the MSP because we don't have to, the MSP doesn't have to worry about, you know, I got to gather this information from all over right. the place. You guys are doing that legwork for them. Yeah. Um, and I think that has a lot of value. Yeah. We, um, we can see the future of like uh, the, the content library on Finn going into some kind of marketplace where you can come on and not only add your own, but you can, we would love to have experts create content on certain topics, maybe about uh, vulnerabilities that they're seeing and current events to make sure everyone's still up to date. So really that people log on and then we'd have all of this data on what they're interacting with, when they're doing it and why. Uh, And then we'd be able to say, okay, well, based on these individuals learning patterns, these modules would be the best here. Give those to those people. Um, That's where we see it going. We'd be excited about that. No, I I love that. I think that's brilliant. And, you know, and I want to talk about that a little bit. And we are going to, for those of you that like, I've never seen this platform. I want to see the platform. We're absolutely going to get to that. Um, So don't worry, we will get there. Um, But I think, you know, in a space where there are already competitors, right? Like, um, you know, 
so you know like kelvin brings up like no before right they talking about their inside agent stuff it's really good um and you know we have no problem talking about other vendors that are actually providing some quality content stuff yeah. like that there's nothing wrong with that um but you know the reason i want to go into the why we're having this conversation versus the competitors is because you guys have some differentiators and i think that matters before we go into demo everybody wants to see the shiny demo and the shiny you know features and all that stuff but knowing the differentiation that's important. So when we talk about stuff like, um, like, can I secure my tractor? <laughs> Maybe we'll get some gravely, uh, some gravely uh, learning yeah. in there. Put eventually. it on our public roadmap, uh, tractor security yeah. content. See, that's ridiculous. Faxes are already secure, Dustin. I mean, come on, dude. Um, <laughs> so what's Finn's USP versus a no before Holmes? So if you don't know Holmes, Holmes, because Kelvin's Dutch, um, that's a Dutch thing. It's what is it, Kelvin? It's Sherlock Holmes is the name of it, or something like that. Um, in case uh, the audience wasn't aware, um, I don't know what USP is, so I feel stupid. Unique sales proposition. <laughs> oh, okay. I just call it value prop. Okay, um, there you go. So, and you already have one more partner. Talk about ex- ridiculous growth. Um, all right. So, what, what's your what's your unique value proposition versus your competitors? Right? Why are you? Why so, would we pick you? Yeah, I'll split this into two categories of unique value. The first is like the business side of things, like creating relationships with us. And that goes so far as to how invoicing is done and billing and the the way we structure our relationship together. So there's a whole lot of value there. But then the second part is the platform. Uh, So more importantly, like the business relationship, when we're getting married at the hip and we're working together to secure any of your clients, uh, we, you brought up this point earlier, we focus intensely on the community that is just MSPs. Uh, We are everywhere that you, uh, if I'm not, you need to invite me to those channels because we're in MSPs R Us, we're on Reddit in MSP, uh, we're an MSP geek, we have our own vendor channel, we invite all of our clients to our own Slack channel where they can all talk together. Some of it is very productive conversation. Some of it's- Some of it, uh, a a good bit of it. You know, I invited Slagle to it the other day and uh, immediately I tell you, it's like, I regret this decision. Uh, He's (laughs) probably here. So there's a whole lot of benefit that MSPs get just because we've specifically listened to them. We're not some kind of what you said, enterprise first and then channel second. We are channel only. Uh, So that goes as far as the business relationship. Invoicing is a breeze and the way we structure it is makes a lot of sense. Flexibility was the biggest uh, thing that MSPs wanted when we started. Wait, and that, that's been the in. thing that's impressed me, right? That's that's the, um, you know, you guys, everybody says, okay, well, you know, give us your requests. We really want to know. We want to be part of the community. And then they disappear, right? Slagle's, yeah. Slagle and I have talked about this a million times over as far as actual community involvement long term, right? People are going to yeah. stick around. Um, you guys, when I see a feature request happens, um, the feature request is, it's not a, okay, cool, thanks, we'll put it on the list. It's a, okay, well, how would that work? You know, start asking these discovery questions, these business use case questions. Start asking like functional requirements, like, okay, well, well, you know, is this going to do this or how does that fit in here? What do you think? It's a real conversation. You know what I mean? It's made me believe in roadmaps again. (laughs) Like it's a real conversation about, you know, what the MSP is looking for. It's not just some feature request. Now you guys have a public feature request site. I I want to take credit for that because I told you that's right it's, uh, it's, it um, happens to look suspiciously like uh yeah oit like uh, somebody else's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um you know and don't hold it against them they haven't put it on a custom url yet because you know this is a bootstrap company they're, Scrappy, you know, they're, they're yeah. still focusing on features but yeah i mean if you go to fin.upvody.com simon will put it in the chat uh, or on a banner um, you can see the the uh, feature requests that are coming in that people are interested in and the slack that they have of their own and they're in all the other communities. I mean, these guys are everywhere listening and they have been for a long time, um, yeah. which I think is a, is a big, uh, is an important thing. Yeah. So, I so I want to bring up something here. Wade uh, brought yeah. up <laughs> uh, and yeah, there you go. Fin.upvody.com. Um, so Wade Stewart uh, says relationship. Connor's really easy to talk to. First, he asks how the weather is. <laughs> You're giving your CC number. To <laughs> Well, yeah, wait, I forgot to ask about your social too. Uh, you just put that yeah. in the chat real quick and uh, we'll be good to go. Maybe that could be Wes's learning component, right? Talking about crypto and taking exactly. people's social. That's actually yeah. really good. Yeah. Just, uh, he'll randomize the uh, poor guy's name uh, and then use it in a uh, educational video. Um, Absolutely. And uh, so, I need to know, do you guys have any hippo training? Hippo, hippo training. training. Um, it's, in the, it's in the works. It's in the works. Um, it's in the works. I, I was told that uh, you guys have... 
well, so Henrietta, the HIPAA Henrietta. hippo, um, this is her hippo compliance page. Uh, this is a thing that's been going on for a while. So if you guys need last hippo time, yeah. uh, stuff, let me know and, and I will help you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Add it to our feature board. We'll see how many upvotes it gets. And then... <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting big dogged already. Jeez. Yeah. This is why I talk to Connor privately instead of you, Josh. That's, that's... <laughs> Hey, man. Have I not solved the problem you've asked for? Me? I solve things faster than Connor does, right? Well, no, you get it done. That's a different yeah. story, but that's that's not the point. I, I mean, okay, so, uh, you know, uh, MFA? Oh, my God. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. So it's, I'm putting, so I want to put two things out there. I want to put two things out there, okay? Um, one, uh, I should have done this in the housekeeping section of this. Um, OIT and Finn have a partnership. I am personally involved in Finn also financially. So I want to put this out there. This is not like the other partner first. Um, I believe in transparency. So I should have put that in the very, very beginning. We'll put it in the show notes. Uh, so, um, so, but I'm doing it because I believe in the product. Two, um, these guys understand that as a security company, there are certain features that are important and they've put out a ridiculous number of features. You guys have a ridiculous sprint, right? It's some like two weeks, every two weeks you're coming every out. Two weeks, yeah. Um, which is ridiculous. I asked, uh, I asked Josh privately to see if he could find the number of features they've released since ITNC. Cause it's gotta be a ridiculous number. Um, which I'm call it. Do you have any idea? Number. I don't know my number, but it definitely like every two weeks it's like, I don't know, over a hundred hours of dev time, right? Oh, it's, it's gotta be 10, 20. Like, I don't know how to count them yeah, sometimes because they're part of it's some ridiculous. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, Connor's the guy that went to school for math. I got, I got it. I got it. <laughs> we're uh, we're it. tired. That's how many features we put out. So we're tired. That's the number. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but yeah, they put out a, re a ridiculous number of features. They do it based off user requests. And obviously there's other criteria, of course, but, um, but they understand security. And so they are actively working on MFA. I'm saying that because we are doing 30 day trials for people. Um, and if you log in and don't see MFA, I want you to know the three of us have had this conversation ad nauseum and Josh has already worked on it. He's like 80% of the way there. It's coming, coming, coming soon. Can I get a commitment of very, very soon, Josh? I would very, very soon. Absolutely. We're okay. releasing today. It won't be in today, but very, very soon. <laughs> All right. So that that's fair. Uh, you know, I'm just putting it out there because I know somebody's going to come in and be like, what about MFA? Um, so, you know, we're being we proactive it right. about it. You know, it's like, yeah. we actually, you know, we were still, we we're sourcing feedback about who was doing it the best. So we had some cycles with some of the partners about who they thought were best. So trying to incorporate some of that stuff in terms of how recovery works and all that. Uh, so we want to do it right. Because if I throw bad MFA in there, it's, it's going to make your lives worse, you know, My, and might not and, secure you if we don't do it right. So we got to get it right. Right. And to be fair, part of that conversation was, okay, well, how do you remove the MFA if somebody loses their their codes? And like all conversations, when you ask an MSP how they think something should be. Every answer. What, two, 300 every conversations. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to need an old priest and a new priest. I'm going to need some fish. I'm going to need, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it went sideways pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're working on it. So I just wanted to put that out there. All right. So demo time sure i can uh, yeah i mean I, I imagine you guys want to see the platform is there anybody here not using it i know you're still uh, working on gdpr as a roadmap we, item because i know kelvin's in here we have some gdpr content that. uh dustin's yeah. not using us so pe people if you see him go pester him uh don't call him please out pester time. dustin dustin did the intro to me and then he's like and he he pulled a ray he said you guys should use this i'm not using it now, mine, I normally say I'm not using it anymore, but Dustin's like, I'm not using it. But to be fair, he said it's because his guys are swamped with other projects and he will be switching to it. So, All right. no, okay, so okay, that one's not that. using it. Cool. All right, perfect. Dustin has a valid excuse. Uh, Personal I've talked to Dustin. Right. I bothered Dustin way more. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Uh, yeah, it's safe to bring up? Cool. All right. Yes, safe to bring safe to this is our testing MSP. Uh, what do you want me to focus on? You tell me on? you don't have a pretty demo client? Are you telling I, me? Uh... Dude, it's right there. It's right there. Boom. Pretty demo. <laughs> Loads in right away on some clean looking <laughs> checklist here. Can we can get it. Right? To, uh, you know, now that now I'm going through. See, Wade's going getting some PTSD right now because he went through this like uh, three weeks ago or something. So absolutely. What do you want me to focus on? Right. I could focus on a bunch. Besides pretty screens and stuff, what are we looking at here? Uh, so right now, um, ooh, uh, 
One of the biggest things uh, that you focused on earlier, you know, building for MSPs from the start and going enterprise potentially later, but not he's triggered, not doing enterprise first is multi-tenancy. So what you're seeing right here is our partner level dashboard. So we not only have uh, what we've named internally, the distributor level, the partner level, and then the client level. So we have three levels of uh, multi, it's not three levels of multi-tenancy, but three levels of varying access. Uh, and then our goal for this dashboard is that you can take what we're going to call partner level actions. So we've gotten really, really good at automating the actions in single clients, like launching phishing, launching training is as easy as clicking a button. And I can show that to you in a second. Uh, but then what we would really like to do is say, OK, if I have 14 clients here, uh, I'd like to launch this training. I'd like to do this policy. I'd like to prescribe this uh, type of curriculum or this type of uh, adhere to this compliance framework. We want to expose all of that at this level. Uh, it's coming out. It's not very, very soon. Uh, we're talking about it with Josh. Uh, show them what, so, what they got today, Connor. He's always just promising right. tomorrow. <laughs> so, well, okay. <laughs> I was like, leave me alone. No, um, <laughs> no. And to be fair, like I, I got to give them credit where credit's due. Adding, they've they focused heavily on. Uh, it's hard not to sound like a fanboy because, like, I love the company. Be I'm a fanboy because I love the company. It's you know, it's chicken and egg thing. But they've made it super easy to add partners. They've made it super easy so you can add clients yourself. Um, our demo it takes longer to close our Salesforce ticket when you ask for a, a trial than it does for actually us actually to create the new partner. So it's it's a little ridiculous. Yeah, um, but that kind of stuff is really important. You know, ease of use because we all have a million different things going on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um... Oh, you saw me. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. I created a new client. Uh, yeah. While you were and that, it's it's that easy. And you're building API. You're going to have an API so soon ish, and so soon you guys can have like uh, integrations with other you know platforms to pull data in. The MSPs can use something like a Roost or something like that, or Zapier, or, or anything to eventually build some stuff in, which would be pretty awesome. We are definitely talking with uh, the Roost folk. You know how intimate we are with the Roost folks. Yeah. Uh, we're talking we, with them we about what our, they look like. We love our roosters and, and our goots. Yeah. So, yeah. And our goots, yeah. <laughs> I don't think Josh knows that joke. But, uh, we went uh, over it beforehand. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. Um, I um, we, we went over what a goots is. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelvin asks, uh, fishing templates, yep. are there different levels? Uh, under the hood, there is a difficulty for every template. Uh, but here is an example of like a Microsoft Teams fish. Then we have easier to detect ones that are malformed. Uh, so varying templates of varying difficulty. Also, a lot of our clients, uh, so this is our like default library. There's 38. A lot of our clients send us their fishes and we automatically convert them into fishes that go into their campaign. Uh, so they have way more than what you see here, but you can also create your own if you'd like, even though I know, you know, one more thing for MSPs to do. Uh, so we have a WYSIWYG editor that I'd highly suggest you not use. Please learn HTML. Uh, and if you don't want well, to, but it's, it's not too bad though. Cause I had Jack, um, yeah. when we tested this internally, he made like OAT VoIP ones, he made Salesforce ones. Um, and we'll, we'll put it up on a GitHub to, to share those templates, uh, oh, cool. for anybody that wants them. Um, Simon note that down. It's something I've been talking about doing. I just keep forgetting to do it. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, to get you. <laughs> he, okay. So that's the downside. I have to warn all MSPs of this. As soon as you sign up, Connor's going to make sure that your team gets you. I, I, I will not allow my team to get me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been really close. There's been times where like I'm getting legitimate emails and like, is this one of his damn emails? Um, I've almost gotten you. Mark Hamill might show up in your inbox if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you know too much about my personal life at this point that I, you know, I, I think I'm just making myself an easier target. I'm really um, coming down to write a boom just to get some, uh, some information on you. <laughs> So, so, you know, it, yeah, I mean, WYSIWYG is good and we've talked about different editors and stuff. There's no perfect option. Right. Yeah. Um, but HTML makes it easier. It's not, I can tell you myself, I'm not a designer. Um, it's not any more complicated than anything I've done anywhere else. And I made my ConnectWise templates. So yeah. you know, we're also working worth. on a lot of cool stuff in that area. Like we still have to gather a lot of uh, criteria for that. Uh, but we would love for you to be able to see fishes in real time coming across your secure email gateway and have you like convert them into stuff that's brought into your uh, account and then automatically pulled up into campaigns that are running with those specific like specific categories and stuff. So there's a lot of like 
cool stuff we 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 are definitely going to get to uh, that we're working on as well. Dallin uh, mentions uh, he has one of the coolest TikToks out there. Ever. <laughs> um, he mentions uh, my office claims I ignore email. I'm just very security conscious. I'm this close to just shutting off email and be like, you know, this is my security pro- my security posture. There you go. But we yeah, also missed so one. one of the questions, one of the one. questions Kelvin asked, how often yeah. do you update it? You said a little bit of, you know, when people send you stuff, you add it to the platform, but how often are you guys adding stuff? Is there a cadence or is as stuff comes? There's no set cadence for that. It's as stuff comes uh, and creating, adding new phishing templates is like a two minute process for us. Uh, and what we do is we source from the community. It's like, what do you guys see? Do you, you see more SharePoint fishes, those credit card scams you were talking about is CEO fraud, more of a pain now than it was six months ago. And we'll go through that process. And then from there we'll get templates. Can we get a one click so, button? So Clay, I'm glad okay, you, sir, uh, sir, 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 you're not hosting this here, man. You, you <laughs> freaking, this, this is why I like, so like you know, Right. Like this is why I like, like, you know, doing these with like the older crowd because the older crowd can barely focus on their thing. Connor's going faster than I am here. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that's one of the things you during the onboarding is bypass setting the bypass for the filter, right? So the stuff actually gets through. Um, uh, yeah, it's actually, I managed. saw this as a request, it's, wasn't it? It's managed in your checklist right here. Um, so one thing we made, we made onboarding as simple as make sure you have four check marks in your client. Um, We've already found the gaps in this in terms of some of our clients don't communicate with all of their clients that trans that security platforms are being transitioned over. So we're we're helping you guys out a lot. But we missed a question from Kelvin, which was, do you do essentially what sounds like based on their phishing? Yeah. Do they get additional training? It is not automatic that that happens right now. So but can you show the learning moment? process yes uh so that's what i wanted it's, to show you and, um, I, and i love the concept of learning moments right it's not yeah. it's not a training section it's not a module it's a learning moment yeah so here's an example of a learning moment i'll just go through the whole process again here's a fish right uh when user gets fished they're automatically directed to a learning moment which is basically the exact threat that just that they just got fished by um and now this can be hovering clicking on links trying to enter your information, weird places. Uh, We're going to work on um, attachment phishing. Somebody suggested that in MSPs are. So it was a good suggestion. Uh, But what users get here is the exact training on exactly what they fail. So if you combine this with our intelligent campaigns that are selecting the phishes based upon a vulnerability we believe to exist in the user, they'll get the training that we now know exists in the user. And it's everything they should do and nothing they shouldn't. And this is way harder to ignore than uh, a five minute video or even any minute video. They have to click through. Is there, and we... is there any notification to the administrator or to a manager that this has happened? Uh, you have access to all that data. There's no automated notification. It's like, go yell at these people. Is that on it's the roadmap a... or? Like you're saying per fish failed? Yeah. So if, you know, Simon, something comes in for Lucky Charms and Simon clicks on it, right? Like, does the administrator get notified that he got fished? We have a we have a weekly digest kind of thing right now. We're trying to thread the needle. I'm not trying to bombard with alerts, so we're trying to thread the needle and figure out what granularity people want. Um, so we definitely yeah, it's yeah. not on the not on the short term roadmap to give you a per fish notification, um, but there is weekly digest. You know, you can go into the dashboard at any time. <laughs> <laughs> I will put that up there. Hold on. So I'm going to go over to the feature request site and uh, and I'm going to add that because I would like a webhook notification or a email. <laughs> sure. um, yeah, we could poor touch. Josh. <laughs> um, <laughs> some thought leadership in this area uh, that I would suggest is when I talk with employees about this exact interaction with their administrator, they hate it uh, in terms of they feel uh, like they are getting hit with a stick. It's like every time their admin emails, it was like, yo, uh, you basically, you suck and here's why you suck is the tenor of the conversation. Now, I know that a lot of that has to do with the way we communicate with each other, but we are very hesitant to add features to our platform that would degrade the experience that a user needs to have in order to actually be secure. Um, so you're saying that if I have an inflatable on a powered AC adapter and the every time they click on a link, the webhook sends off to an if this and that that inflates the inflatable in front mm. of the employee and starts mocking them yeah. uh, on camera. Yes. You're saying that's a bad interaction. 
I'd, I'd, I'd warn against it. Uh, have you ever seen Silicon Valley? It's like uh, Gil Foyle's yes. Bitcoin alert. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. They might create uh, the Jason's web already, yeah. <laughs> Let him do so it. Jason's already saying, shut up and take my money. Um, I mean, you know, and he's the most, you know, the most ornery person in, when it comes to security you want to talk to. Yeah. So for him to be impressed. Jason says, and, and wait, I think, we have a roadmap. We also. Yeah. Have dark mode. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have a dark mode? Yeah. I, I think there's another roadmap. Uh, it's not even on the roadmap. There's another uh, feature request I've seen over 10 years old on another billion dollar company that shall not be named. Uh, but yeah, that's, pre that's pretty awesome, dude. That's. Uh... <laughs> You have fans. I'm glad because I'm. I don't get to be the only fanboy. I appreciate that the audience loves uh, how often this is, yeah. or how awesome this is. <laughs> Money this gone. Is <laughs> Money gone. <laughs> Dallin, uh, yeah, reach out. We can absolutely get you set up. Don't miss the boat. Uh, yeah, yeah Dallin. Well, I'll get. I'll get you taken care of. D Dallin's another uh, voice service provider. Uh, he's actually not one of my MSPs at all. He has his own. Operates his own voice platform. Good friend. Um, really awesome guy so you know you're you're reaching out to the world man okay is this a docosaurus is this <laughs> i don't know what that means i don't it's a dutch thing i, I don't know man it's a dutch thing I, is everything a dutch thing these days when you uh, i'm it's 7 45 so i imagine like kelvin is at least two ips in <laughs> and he's probably cooked something really delicious at this point so <laughs> docusaurus.io i see they got the yeah yeah we got a similar dark mode switch at the top of ours for sure Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Some sort of website. I, I guess I should probably mention, you know, it's uh whatchamacallit. Is, is that what you're talking about here? This? Yeah, look, it's got the dark mode switcher mm -hmm. at the top. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah they're copying you us know, already. Jeez, uh, man, damn. You guys are spreading. It's impressive. Um, yeah, Kelvin, besides being a, you know, a, a very successful MSP owner in the Netherlands and besides being a most valuable PowerShell person, uh, he's also one of the, uh, he's, I guess, creator, um, cause there's a lot of contributors to it, but this was his brainchild, uh, cyber mm. drain and partner portal, um, right. which we are very proud to sponsor. It's, it's an awesome program. Um, so go reach out to that. I'll put the, put it, Simon, put it in the chat. It's awesome. Um, yeah, we'll stop. We'll go back to uh, we'll go back to uh, Goots and to the <laughs> to the client. All right. So, what else should we be looking at? You have Clay learning moments. You have this. reporting. You have easier provisioning. You, what else should we be looking at here? So, Clay asked uh, the big one of the biggest problems our MSPs told us about is whitelisting traffic. So, we have created uh, an integration with Graph API where you can drop content in inboxes and send it to Unread. So unless you have something actively scanning inboxes like Veracruz Sentinel or even Iron Scales, like all of your secure email gateways are bypassed with this stuff. So there's no more whitelisting needed. Skips After. the skips the SMTP stuff entirely. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. We also have uh, what's the the Finn number one killer feature? Um, probably how easy it is to start phishing. Uh, I thought it was just Josh. I, th I thought that was it is Josh at the end of the day, right? <laughs> um, so Kelvin, one thing, I, I, one cool thing we have is like this notion of shared resources. So if you create a template or you create a phishing campaign, like you can share it across all of your clients because in almost API based traffic, uh, almost exclusively you're running the exact same phishing campaigns in your clients currently. That's not because it's what should get done. It's because it's what's the easiest way to get things done right now. So we've gone so far as if you select the templates or you select the categories, you can configure an entire campaign, share those settings across all of your clients, and then launching a new campaign, like uh, this initial client campaign is as easy as launching the preset, looking around at the information, and then just launching it. So as you can see, here's my testing account. But launching a new, getting a, a new client up and up and running, uh, uh, Wade could probably tell you, it goes from potentially hours of work to 10 minutes at most. And that's if you didn't have your CSV of users uh, ready to go and you didn't want to use our Azure Sync, which I've already been told is way better than a lot of other competitors on the market. Don't trust me. Like the I'm best a of your saying we're yeah. the best. Go ask all of the community, even people who don't use us, who have tried us and don't work with us anymore. Uh, they will tell you that uh, of their positive experience. That's what I always suggest MSPs go do. 
So, you know, and I think you're speaking directly, Kelvin, when you say anything Azure based. I mean, that's that's yeah. definitely going to win him over. Um, Clay offers, you know, if you guys don't have a tagline yet, fish for fun and profit with your customers. <laughs> It's not lost on us that we have built a very powerful engine and uh, <sighs> you can upload phishing templates and upload a list of users and off to the races you go. So we're very cognizant of not having okay. that happen. Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest things, so I'll, I'll show one more thing to Kelvin, is we have a, we don't really have a name for it yet. I call it the auto configuration warlock, the client creation wizard. There's like nine names I use for it. But basically, uh, you answer a set of questions that are going to create a set of topics that your users need phishing and training against. Mm -hmm. So I'm just scrolling through really quickly. Uh, you can pause these if you're watching the video playback. So then it creates continuous campaigns, both in phishing and training, that never end. And will, on whatever cadence you select, monthly, weekly, quarterly, all at once, will train users on these topics and phish them against these topics. And then as we get a, a what we call a vulnerability pro, a holistic vulnerability profile for users, our phishing will adjust itself to detect which fish in all of the allowable fishes based upon these topics is likely to cause a vulnerability, cause a learning moment, because that's what we want. We want users to fail in a safe, constructive, supportive environment before they get that email from Ray Orsini that says, I need you to buy $300 in gift cards uh, for X, Y, Z reasons. I'm, I'm not convinced it wasn't you prior to us meeting setting up the long play for this. I, I you know, you know, it doesn't escape me. 5D chess is uh, one of my skills. You can find it in my <laughs> LinkedIn bio. Uh, and I, okay, Sheldon. <laughs> I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to take credit for being smart. Most of most of the smart is right down there, right at John. He's never beat me at chess. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and I just get. Uh, I just talk a lot and get lucky most of the time. Uh, Jason, I'll tell you that I never stop. <laughs> I I, Dallin says he thinks he just got an email from me telling him should buy an NFT of a goot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Kelvin asks, is there a notification webhook service to when the campaigns start? Our current platform does that, and it's beautiful mm. if you start phishing 10,000 users. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. You should. Can somebody add that to the feature board? I like that a lot, actually. We, you know... <laughs> we're halfway there i guess i should say we do that internally it would not be hard for us i think yeah. a lot of people are looking for just that next level insight of when stuff is going out and that's definitely on our short-term roadmap right after right after mfa of course <laughs> you're seeing this live right there boom thank submitted. you so oh, much. shit i gotta log in never mind you know you gotta log in you're the one that made us use it. <laughs> hey i've seen I, know. On Reddit. I do have a login <laughs> I've seen what happens on Reddit when it gets anonymous. I don't want to repeat that. Put your no, name on it. I, Say it with your chest. You are absolutely right to do it this way. Um, uh, I would love to give you the uh, demo, Kelvin. I think we're supposed to get together soon anyway. I think you and I chatted about that. But I can give you a demo at the same time. Too. Boom, done. Nice. Kelvin says to do it. <laughs> yeah. Password with a zero. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's better than password one, two, three. Um all right. So, all right. So what do we got next? Uh, maybe I should demo instead of asking. This is the demo. Yes, you should demo. Absolutely. But if you have questions, let's, let's demo here. Let's, uh, let's get it up. Yeah. I think he's asking if he should take over the demo, in my opinion. That's, that's how I read that. Oh, he should de he yeah. could demo it. I concur, Josh. Is this Kelvin smart. gets uh, pretty pushy. He's been with us. He's done the uh, after hours after tech bar till he's the only one that's lasted till uh, dawn. Uh, the next oh day. Gosh. It's because you didn't give me the opportunity. Yeah. You, you guys just, you cut it short yeah. at about one in the morning. I was ready to, I had beer for days, Ray. I'll remember next week. I will remember that when we get together. Right. Next Wednesday, we will have right, that I'm, conversation. I'm 26 and I got hairline to burn. All right. Yes. I'm much of it. Four when Matrix came out. I, I know. We had this I was. I was. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, McSwalman got a, a phishing email. <laughs> All right. uh, this is yeah. This is one of our training reminders. Uh, before you say, "Wow, this looks like a fish," uh, we are we agree with you, and this is being changed very shortly as well to be way more. Uh, I would love to do that, Clay. By the way, spicy chocolate. But um, we got rid of passwords for logging into your learning management system, so you're never going to get a support ticket that says I can't log in and complete my training, or you know you're not compliant because so and so couldn't log in. Users are dropped right at their portal. Uh, and then they can take their training right away. And so it's super quick, uh, the shortest possible path to learning. 
is what we call it. And here's one of our videos from one of our providers called Habituate. We also do policy management. So test policy. I think one of these is from our release. No. We also do policy management. So you can upload PDFs, distribute them to groups of people, and it's all managed through same dashboard. management, yeah. Jason, I will absolutely do spicy chocolate. I, I've offered that before when you brought it up on Tech Bar. So 100%. I think you, if you bring the spicy chocolate, I'll bring the uh, toe of Satan. Because uh, I didn't do the toe of Satan. I've done the spicy chocolate. I don't want to do that again. Oh, yeah, and Simon's coming. So <laughs> Simon Not loves that not. spicy chocolate. Uh, right, sure. Simon? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, languages. Uh, are there languages here? You guys support multi-language yet? At least one. At oh, least no, no. one. <laughs> so yes, you support languages. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Uh, language. A language. language yeah. yeah. Language uh, parentheses s. Uh, English. English so far. <laughs> I love um, that. Other than that, you can customize a whole. Everything's white labelable in our platform, by the way. So you can co-manage with your. You can co-manage single instances with your clients, or you can keep it completely partner managed. Uh, and then every external communication that ends up uh, being put in front of an employee or a stakeholder can be completely scrubbed uh, of Finn. Uh, and you can put your branding on there, your information, your logo, or you can actually put your client's information there as well. So. All right, so the feature. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna put this out there. Up, fin dot up, well, I can't talk today. Fin dot uh, So you can put in 17 languages. Josh says he already knows how to do all the translations. Yeah, Josh. Uh, done it. tomorrow. Done. Um, and real quick, so I know Kelvin's joking, right? But real <laughs> quick, um, you guys are releasing today new features, right? On the next release, you have. Uh, and the user sync upgrades to the user sync. Uh, you want to talk for about Matt. that one, Josh, so you don't have to turn yeah. it off and on it again? Yeah, it's for Matt specific. No, um, <laughs> our user sync is good. There's something, I don't know, our relationship with the Microsoft Graph API is evolving. So we're learning how to be a better a better spouse, or it, it is, I don't know. So basically, before, okay. there's probably 80% chance you have when you hit go that it says, ah, no, it didn't work. And you hit turn it off and back on again. And it just works. So we're releasing today the fix that it should work 100% of the time. Now. Once you get it to work, we, we don't see a lot of long-term problems with the sync. Uh, yeah. But today is the day, you know, I'm tired of having people have okay. to do that. You know, I got guys that got to do this for 30 clients. They shouldn't have to do that, right? Just make it one step That's easier. Fair. I love that. And that's that business case stuff we're talking about, right? You have right. MFA coming soon, soon. Uh, you have soon, soon. overhauling the welcome email workflow. What, what is that? Oh my gosh. So yeah, we're learning that um, this is definitely one of the most forward facing, customer facing features or services that, that gets offered through MSPs. It's not a, you know, whatever, like little system tray, hideable thing. People need to communicate with their end users that they're going to start phishing or that they're changing phishing. Um, a lot of people find that it's easier for them to go through us to do that. We've got their logos, we've got all the client lists. So they're like, I'm going to be phishing these people. Can you send all welcome emails? So that Letting was an interesting do that conversation, in right? Because like Jason and I were of the mindset of like, we don't want to let them know. We want it to be a pop quiz. And then we saw others, like I think Kyle Spooner was one of them. We saw others that were saying, you know, we want to be able to let them know this thing is coming, right? Yeah, um, for sure. So that customizability is, is key. And that that's the thing that enterprise will never understand, but MSP focused will. And that dovetailing back to the beginning of the conversation, being able to understand MSPs have various needs. This is not the same thing as an enterprise would have. Um, and that's that's something I appreciate you about you guys. We are at the top of the hour, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, you know, we can cover much, much, much more. Um, you know, remember for a 30-day trial, just hit us up, success at OIT.com. Uh, we have 30-day trials. We have uh, partner benefits and all that fun stuff. Um, we have uh, the Josh and Connor uh, are around literally everywhere. Feel free to hit them up if you need anything at all. Uh, Connor loves saying Josh is going to do feature requests. So absolutely do those. I've been known to hop um, back on the sticks when needed, Ray. <laughs> absolutely. And uh, we know you guys are going to be at Right of Boom because I'll be there. Um, you guys are going to be at Right of Boom next week. Anything else you guys have coming up? I mean, we got to release it every two weeks. We uh, got to finalize the uh, uh, agreements or rather pay for them now because we've already signed uh it nation secure but this is like six months eight months yep. in the future uh, we're definitely going to be at secure and connect and 
the ones that you've already seen us at? The right um, answer is yes, but we're going to have to look at the calendar. I forget. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll give you a list. Yeah, we'll get a calendar going. We got two weeks. We will be doing. On. We will be doing much, much, much more stuff together. So, uh, including some technical deficits, um, Connor, Josh, thanks so much, guys, for having, uh, for being on and and going through this with us. Uh, enlightening as always. Uh, appreciate it, uh, Simon. What else do we have coming up, dude? Yeah, so we have a couple of events uh, next week. We're gonna be a ride of boom, like Ray mentioned, uh, and then after the following week, Ray is gonna be doing a webinar with Kyle from Huntress. Uh, that's gonna be a DV panel that he's gonna be sitting on. Uh, do you want to give a little bit of insight on that, Ray? Yeah, absolutely. So Jason Cycle and I have been talking for a while now, and Huntress completely owns um, accountability in here. You know talking about vendor responsibility and talking about bug bounty programs and VDPs and uh, vulnerability disclosure programs um, where you have vendors that absolutely want to have the information. And Finn is working with us, with us on this too, um, where you actually want to have this information put it out there. So I'm going to be talking uh, with several people on a panel with uh, Huntress hosted by Kyle. Uh, and then Jason Seigel and I are going to be coming out with a vulnerability disclosure program workshop specifically for vendors. Uh, so there is absolutely no excuse for not having a VDP and having a bug bounty program because Divid will host the bug bounty program for you. Um, so we're going to be talking about that. And then 217, we got our tech bar. Uh, we have some big changes in plan for tech bar. Uh, Cynthia Schreiner of Lion Guard will be with us as some other surprise guests, but uh, I'll leave it up to the tech bar. You got to join us to find out. Uh, what's February 23rd, Simon? So February 23rd, we're going to be at Eureka Processes IT Documentation User Group. Uh, we're going to have the round two of the King of Processes, uh, which Ray was the champion of uh, the first time that we did that around. And this time around is going to be with Todd Kane as well. Uh, so tune in for that on February 23rd at 2 p.m. And then after that, uh, right after the day after we have uh, at 4.30, we have our Partner First webinar featuring the, uh, Nigel Moore of the Tech Tribe. And after we have on March 10th at 1 p.m., we have a partner first webinar featuring grading MSP. So make sure that you subscribe and you tune in for that uh, to stay up to date with everything that we have going on in the channel. And I did not know that uh, that was uh, Cynthia's uh, or that was Jason Segel's birthday. So that's that's awesome. Even better. All right, Connor, Josh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, the OIT family, thanks so much for being part of us. Like I said, email success at oit.co. Uh, Connor's all over all the all the social communities. Hit him up. I am as well. You know how to get a hold of me. Until next time, uh, be safe and be awesome. Later, guys. Thanks See for you. having us. See you, everybody.